You are now in the zone. Zone, zone, zone. The zone. With the taste, taste test live. live. Hosted by Damien Lamar and Blue Francois. What's jazzing? Hey, I'm jazzing great today. Welcome to Taste Test Live. Mm. I'm Damian Lamar. I'm the host of the new radio show Taste Test on WJCT 89.9 FM, Northeast Florida's NPR station. My radio show is a one hour long music program that airs twice a week on Saturdays and Tuesday nights at 11 p.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific. And it has a focus on redefining urban radio. That's my goal for 2019. I'm excited to be back again for another fantastic week. And joining me in Studio 2 is my co-host, Mr. Blue Francois Extraordinaire. Welcome. Mm, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How have things been for you since oh, last man. week? Oh, man. Long week. Long week. Yeah. Did you make it down to Atlanta for the Super Bowl? No, I didn't. I sure did. I really canceled. thought you were going. Yeah, we got canceled last minute. I was really kind of looking forward to you, you know, giving me some reviews about how crazy the traffic was Man. and how you could I'm never glad. get anywhere close to the stadium. And I, I'm kind of happy I didn't go, but hey. Okay. Yeah, so happy. what did you do instead? Uh, I ended up working. Okay. Making some money? Yeah. Instead of spending money? Yeah. That's not money. a bad thing. I definitely would have spent if I would have went. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, it's, it's kind of easy to do an ATO. Yeah. Because I think my Airbnb was 200 a night. That um, I mean, I, the client was going to pay for it, but it was two hundred night. Yeah, so you save money. Yeah, nothing like that. Nothing yeah. like that. Um, Blue, can you tell if, take a few moments and tell our first time listeners what they can expect for us over the next few minutes to an hour? Each week on our podcast, Taste Test Live, we have heartfelt, insightful music digestion sessions and highlight the happenings in the music and entertainment industry. On our show, you'll hear artist interviews and exclusive music you won't hear on any other podcast. I know that's right. Um, we do keep our podcast subscribers happy by offering new and fresh content every week. And as I mentioned weekly, we are now officially booking into May 2019. Can you believe it? It's February and we're already booked out through May. Wow. Yeah, that's a good problem to have. So yeah, that's good. listen, if, you, if you're interested in being a guest on the podcast, Taste Test Live, then head over to www.taste test live and contact us so we can have you on. Um, and coming up a bit later, we do have a guest in the studio, a mixed media artist Overstreet Ducasse, who will be joining us in the studio to talk about his views on the state of the art in Jacksonville and in the U.S. Um, but Blue, what time is it? It's time to put this in your mouth. Yes, I'm so <laughs> excited. Part of uh, something we're going to start doing every week is we're going to do something called the Taste of the Week. Mm. So on my show that aired on Saturday night uh, at 11 o'clock, I played uh, about 15 songs. And one of those songs is the Taste of the Week. And this Taste of the Week award goes to... Dun, 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 drum roll. Blah, 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 blah. 21-year-old Black Focus recording artist Mansur Brown. Mm. His debut album is called Back South. Well, actually, excuse me, the track is called Back South, and his debut album is called Shy Roy. Uh, Mansur is a London-based guitarist. As I mentioned, he's 21 years old, and he can be found performing with a lot of great London-based musicians and world-renowned artists such as Thundercat, bass player Thundercat, Yusef Kamal, Yusef Williams, pianist Alpha Mist, um, drummer Yusef Days. He likes hanging out with a lot of guys named Yusef. Yusef, yeah, I saw that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so um, let me tell you, do yourself a favor and dive into Shiroy by Mansa Brown. It's, it's solid. For a 21-year-old, that dude is definitely channeling a little bit of uh, Jimi Hendrix meets trap music. Yeah. If that makes any sense. Yeah. Um, so... Taste of the Week goes out to Mansur Brown. Yeah. Keep doing what you're doing, bro. So what else is on deck? Um, What's on deck is a taste of what we're going to put in everybody's mouth. <laughs> 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 that didn't sound right. Oh, my gosh. Oh, they're going to like it, though. <laughs> <laughs> um, Let's talk about the Super Bowl. Okay. The Super Bowl. 
the Super Bowl. Wait, did you watch the Super Bowl? I did not. I, is for it, personal okay. reasons. Um, Boycott? I am standing with Kaepernick. Kaepernick okay. And um, I will not be supporting the NFL. I will not watch the Super Bowl. Okay. I didn't watch any commercials. I didn't watch any of the game. It didn't come on in my house. Autumn, did you watch the Super Bowl? It's not yes or no. Okay. No, Autumn didn't see it either. You probably just so. didn't watch because you don't really watch football, right? Oh, oh, okay. Well, it comes on on broadcast TV. I mean, you got rabbit ears. I got a laptop that I hook up. Oh, okay. okay. All right. Well, Autumn says she has a laptop that she hooks up to the TV. She does not have cable, so she is wireless. Wow. And free of the NFL. Yeah, I uh, watched a movie during Netflix and checked the score. After the movie was over with, um, I'm not going to say I'm not boycotting. I just chose not to watch the Super Bowl, you know, just for GP. Huh? I mean, I, I feel like, you know, one, I just feel like it's just too much propaganda, like too much. And, you know, like it's, it's not funny watching football for me who loves football. It's not fun anymore. Like they took away like, you know, like it's, be, it, be, be honest, Blue. I mean, you didn't watch it because you knew Tom Brady was going to like win again. Um. Yes and no. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's uh, he. Well, he. Well, one. He's a. He didn't have. I mean, from according reading the highlights and watching some of the. You know. You know. Watching some of the. You know. Reviews and what people thought, like from Sports Center and stuff like that. They were saying that it was a great game. They. They expected the Rams to win. They was out. You know. You know. The the Patriots was outmatched um, on offense, but for some reason on both ends, like you know, it was a good game as far as defense versus offense. But at the end of the day, I mean, Bledsoe to me is a goat. But at the end of you know, it's just too much propaganda, too much, um, you know, just too much going on with the whole NFL and just yeah. you know. So. Well, some of the highlights I know uh, Gladys Knight sang the national anthem. Yes. Yes, I heard she did good. Yeah, everybody's talking about her. I mean, you know, and I think she there was some type of signing going on. Um, <laughs> I, I, I don't know because I, yeah. I wasn't there and I didn't watch it. I didn't so, watch it. Yeah, um, but I know that Gladys Knight is a staple to Atlanta, so yeah, that's probably yeah. why she was involved. That was a good move. Yeah. Um, the halftime show also featured. Um, did you gosh. know that Big Boy drove a Cadillac? I, now I read this. He drove a Cadillac from the forty-eight long, forty-eight yard line. Well, from the half yard line, almost you know, like towards. But they was just saying that he have more yards than the Rams did, like driving yards, like on offense, like just because he drove a Cadillac. He that was his entrance into before he performed the song. Really, and they made a joke saying he had more yards than the Rams. Wow. <laughs> Well, shout oh out to Big God. Boy for those yards. Big Boy, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, they said a lot of Atlanta people showed up and showed out. Um, and um, I heard Maroon 5 showed a little skin that's making everybody <sighs> upset that Janet Jackson showed skin and got, got punished for showing skin. I thought that was retarded. No, but that, that's, that's, that is, that's, that's a man. I mean, if, if Lil Wayne performed, he normally performs without his shirt. Uh huh. So, uh, you know, I, I just don't think. I don't know. I, I, I don't think that was a fair. That's, that was fair to Adam because I like. I, I ain't gonna lie. I like Maroon Five. So I do too. So for yeah. him to perform without his shirt, which I think he normally no, does he take his shirt off sometimes? Does he ever take it? No, well, he he is a sex symbol. I mean, yeah, I, you know, I, I don't know. I just don't. I think that was retarded. Now, if if it was a female artist and she. Sh- Deliberate, like, like, say Madonna was doing the halftime show, and she deliberately did. Why, why you got to call Madonna? I like that though, because she's known to be raunchy. Well, I ain't gonna say raunchy. She's known to be um, racy with her. Why know, not? Uh, you know, Nicki Minaj or Cardi B or somebody like that. I mean, they would wear their breasts out and cover it up with a nipple t- tape. Okay, but he just showed his nipple. I don't know. I just think that's retarded. I just thought. But why? Huh? Why did why did he show his nipple? Why? I don't know. Because he's a guy and he could without yeah. getting censored. But he had a good meaning, you know. He had the, he had he had a, a sentimental tribute of, of of words of compassion for the Kaepernick thing. Okay, well, that's good. So that was that was the statement that their band decided to make. Yeah. Okay. All because right. uh, according to news, the performance of Maroon Five was very boring. Yeah, I heard that. I heard that. They're a great band. Yeah. Okay. Travis Scott did horrible. Okay. Sorry, Travis Scott. Um, they say your music is good, but the performance. It was subpar? Subpar. Yeah. Jeez. Well, um, I, I, you know, based on what I heard, it was, our, you know, the lowest ratings in 10 years. Yeah. The lowest scoring game in Super Bowl history. Yeah. 
And how many wins did Tom Brady have after like he's won like seven games? Yeah, I think it's or he's been to the Super Bowl at least seven times now. Yeah, seven, eight times. But this is a six ring. Wow. So he has more rings than any other athlete. Wait, yeah. Michael so Jordan I think he knows. Oh, he's tied with Michael Jordan. So I was talking to Tommy Bridgewater earlier today, and he showed me a picture when they actually picked um, Tom Brady when he first when they first picked him, and he looked like this regular round the way neighborhood guy Mm -hmm. and he did not look like a football player at all yeah um so they're everybody's sort of surprised by the original photo and they somebody had some vision and like that boy's going to be able to play some football he's going to the super bowl six times they they prophesied that thing yeah so uh interesting yeah but um um adam levine was very thankful he thanked um on the instagram he uh he wrote uh he had some words to share with them and he had like a list of words that were very captivating i'm not going to read them all because it's very lengthy but some of the words were like embrace remember enlighten preserve inspire sweat fight express give receive elevate and you know it was a few more other words but he showed them in uh, these words after his performance um that he took the time to write and you know he showed them you know in tribute to um you know like what's going on with the nfl nfl and you know the the protests against you know well, no, i mean i'm sorry the protests against the nfl about protest police brutality and so you know um that was a you know i think that was his way of giving colin kaepernick um you know some kind of uh uh rem- you know i'll say remembrance of mm-hmm. understanding of what's going on but at the end of the day you know everybody was trying to make a check because <laughs> yeah, well. you know they show their how much they get paid like each they show <clears throat> that on the internet shows you know who got paid and how much so it's like right. that's released so i mean would you well. perform if someone said hey damien lamar Everybody's canceled. Can you perform? I probably would not. Man, that would have been the biggest check you ever got. Maybe. No, you know what? You would have got backlash like Chris, uh, Chrisette Michelle, who performed at the Trump mm-hmm. inauguration. Yeah, yeah. She, Chrisette Michelle and performed at the inauguration, and now and she's, she's still she's receiving done. a little backlash yeah, from it, and I think it's affecting her career. She's done. So, yeah. Um, Moving on, uh, the, city of, uh, the city of Philadelphia have just passed a bill that symbolically bans R. Kelly from ever stopping in their city for a visit wow and it goes deeper than that they all i mean it's just a bill that, that hasn't been passed yet okay but they, they introduced also, the bill yeah they introduced the okay. bill and they would like for him not to be able to visit or if he have any performances um it's going to automatically get canceled and i think if the bill get passed or not they can ban his performance like he don't have to they don't have to wait for the bill to pass for him to perform there even if he's getting paid like they can cancel the show but uh, but as far as him visiting and coming, they don't want him in the in the city. So the he's not of, welcome in yeah, Philly. Yeah, he's not welcome in Philly. Yeah. So they wait for the man. So that way, so he if he wants to pass through and he gets pulled over, he done. Like he can get, he, they can uh, escort him out the city lines. So how you feel about that? Exhale. <laughs> That's my word. Exhale. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. So that was a short little segment, but important nonetheless. Thank you for listening to Put This In Your Mouth. We're going to take a short break and we'll be back with our introduction of our guest, Mr. Overstreet Ducasse, who I'm very, very excited to talk to. Yes. I've been wanting this to happen yes. so long. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Taste Test Live. I'm Damien Lamar and... Blue Francois. And I'm going to take a quick note to introduce our guests. Born in Haiti, Overstreet Ducasse came to the United States at the age of six. He was faced with challenges of an unfamiliar environment, a new language, and a different culture. Overstreet then turned to art as a means of expression and communication, and he deems the universal language as a way of releasing his frustration and aggravations. The art of Overstreet goes beyond the visual. His work is captivating, direct, abundant, and it's filled with metaphors and meanings. And as an artist, Ducasse refuses to be locked down by one particular style. He creates using a variety of materials and mediums, including found objects, which I've had the privilege of actually seeing. Inspired by the desire for reason and understanding, Overstreet works an expression of his life experiences and his intellect. He describes himself as a depressionist, a term that he conceived 
to express both his frustrations and the depth of his thought and the imagination of that his work exudes. Welcome to Taste Test Live one more time, my friend. Glad to have you back. Thank you. Yeah, that's right. So the last time you were here, um, you were with Patrick Evan, who was one of our musical guests. And Patrick gave a little bit of a story. Um, but, yeah, it, I wanted to have an opportunity to sort of dive in to talk to you specifically because you represent one of the local. And I, I really don't like using the word local because it's just so defining. But you represent a homegrown aspect of mixed media and art right here in Jacksonville. Um, so I, I want to have a conversation with you to talk about what it was like growing up here. Um, and, it, it, you know, as I read in your bio, it was differently different and challenging growing up what that was like. So start, take us back at the beginning, if you will, paint a picture for us. Mm, let me see. As early as I could remember, probably we're in Haiti. Um, yeah. Just going to school. Uh, I left Haiti when I was six. So we're talking about maybe four or five going to my grandmother's house, going to school. Um, I remember, you know, walking down the street, seeing all the vendors, people painting, carving out of wood. Mm, my cousin, he used to make a, I think they call it a fanal in Creole, um, which is basically, I guess, these houses. Is that mm -hmm. what they call it? Like a boarded house. Yeah, but it, uh, it's like made out of transparent paper. Mm -hmm. So okay. when you put a candle, it lights up. Oh, mm -hmm. nice. Okay. Oh, okay. So I was going to test. Oh, you know what? I I had plans of humiliating Blue. <laughs> so I, he... I'm bilingual. Oh, I... I uh, 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 I don't even have to say, look, he, if he know what, I, I didn't even know for sure. Okay, if he yeah. knows what a final is, then I don't even need to question yeah. that he's Haitian. Yeah, that was the beginning. Yes, that just yes. lets you know right there. Yeah, you know yeah, exactly yeah, yeah, what he's exactly. talking about. Exactly. I don't even need to question. Yeah. <laughs> man, I had a whole skit for you, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So we're in, uh, so, so you, so we're in Haiti. You saw yourself right. walking down and then you saw a lot of the art making. Correct. What inspired you to be become an artist? Um, I don't know if I was really thinking about being an artist at mm -hmm. that age. So I come to the United States. Um, I guess we started, you know, in elementary school. It was quite normal during that era in the 80s. Art was prevalent. It was part of your daily, when you go to school, yeah. activity. It existed. Exactly. For sure, yeah. And, you know, different languages, Spanish and, you know, all kinds of stuff existed. Physical education, mm -hmm. music, band. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Any type of performing arts. Yes. Yeah. Um, and, of course, as you get towards uh, junior high school, high school, all these things start to disappear. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know. For, from day one, I don't know if it's encouragement, spirit, or whatever. I knew I was going to be an artist. Um, people have always... I actually, I'm very, very, very fortunate, especially from the background that I come from, where, you know, the people around you or the school you went to, uh, black, young, male, you know, yeah. you are not going to be anything. Trust me, teachers would say that. Yeah. For real. Mm -hmm. I've heard it. Um, and if you are going to be something, you better, you better go to college or the military. That's your Those only are the offer. options. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah, art was not an option then oh, growing up for you. Okay. No, not at all. Yeah. I lied all the time. Like uh, George Costanza uh, from Seinfeld yeah. talking about he was going to be an architect. <laughs> yeah. So that was no, your story? Yeah, that was my story. And, you know, impressed by father's friends and yeah. stuff like that. So in the back of your mind, you knew you would not be an architect at all. You Absolutely. Just, you just, it was lip service at that point. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. All right. So, but I think when I really, really had to, because uh, I, I come from a very hard working background. Mm -hmm. My father took me to work with him when I was like nine years old. So we're talking about building homes, like repairing and building from the foundation to the end. The only thing we, we didn't do was electrical work. Okay. Um. So uh, I come from a very hardworking background. So 
the realization of becoming an artist is uh, uh, working at a job and getting fired, which was a very, very good job, <laughs> working at a nuclear plant. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I, that's when I was like, okay, I got to take this for real. Okay. Uh, so I would say that was uh, about the time I said, okay, this is full time. I was living in California at the time. Or what part of California? Uh, first Oceanside for a brief period. Um, and then, uh, Los Angeles on Tamarind, mm -hmm. you know, Santa Monica Boulevard right off of that. Okay. Yeah. So, um, paint a picture, if you will, how, how different was LA and the art scene versus Jacksonville and the art scene, if you will. Um, to be honest with you, I can't, I don't really want to talk about the art scene more so the uh, experience. Like, okay. The scene to me was not really that important. Mm -hmm. What I could tell you is when I was in L.A., which would be considered, you know, one of the top art places in the United States, you know, with New York and, you know, um, I worked, but I didn't really work as much as I could have. But um, I was there for almost two years, I think. Mm -hmm. When I moved to Jacksonville, I would say within maybe my first three months in Jacksonville, I probably did as much if more art um, than when I was in almost there for two years in L.A. So I don't know. There was something about Jacksonville and the art. So, I, I mean, I think I like to think because when I think about art and I think about the individuals that I know that are actually creating art right now mm -hmm. in the community, Mm -hmm. you, and there's a term I use all the time, I may have used it in, in the past, top of mind marketing or top of mind awareness. That means the first person that comes to mind when you think of art mm -hmm. is Overstreet. And Why? I, and, and I, because I've seen your art before I met you mm. um, in, um, in Springfield, um, several different art galleries, and I had no idea. I was always intrigued by the, uh, the very... It's very um, deep, um, for lack of a better word, really, really thoughtful, like almost like you can just stare at it and you can just go into the expressions of what you created and look at it for hours and, and come up with so many different interpretations of what your what your art was. Um, and I've had the opportunity to even see some of your stuff at Cork and be be privy to an actual explanation of one of your pieces and that you broke down. Which one was it? This was the one that, oh gosh, uh, it was at, it was for my birthday um, mm. and it was on the wall and there was lots, I can't, I'm trying to remember exactly which one it was specifically. Uh, was it Abomination series? That's it. That yes. was the one. I yes. remember that. Yeah. yeah. For those that are listening, tell the people what that piece was like and what it was like creating that. Um, it was a continuation of uh, a series I started years ago back in the, uh, what do you call it, Goodwin Cafe era, when me, Patrick, Jason, mm. and, uh, oh, you were there, right? Mm, I remember. <laughs> me, Patrick, Jason, Clark, mm -hmm. and some other stragglers. <laughs> 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 uh, so uh, you could tell when a piece is going to be, or a series is going to be great, because I always start laughing. Yeah. So Patrick was around to see these laughters. So anyways, uh, I continued doing that piece or part of that series. And abomination, if you know, is a word in a Bible uh, that basically they, it describes what people would say God detests or hate, don't like, or is immoral in his eyes. So um, my art uh, often, well, not often, it always tells a story. Um, it, it exposes a lot of hypocrisy, um, but in a humorous form. I'm never out to get anybody. I'm always there to learn. I'm always there to teach. Um, but with civil conversation and humor, like don't ever come with hatred, anger, because that's not where I'm coming from. Mm -hmm. um, so... I was just making fun of a serious issue. And the issue is, if you believe that God thinks that it is immoral uh, to be gay, then um, 
it is silly that in the same book, it also says it is immoral not to eat shrimp. So I was just making fun of the idea that, you know, if I had a choice, God came up to me and he gave me a task and he said, okay, you have the task to not eat, to get people to stop eating shrimp or to stop them from being gay. Which task being lazy do you think I would choose? <laughs> the bar is way too high. I mean, yeah. all these people are eating shrimp. Let's start with that first and then we could deal with the gay issue. Yeah, yeah. You know? So a lot of your art, I mean, based on what I've seen, a lot of it, um, I would say, is visually viewed to be controversial. Absolutely. In, in its nature. Like uh, one of the, the pieces I'm looking at, I'm looking on your website, Blow Your Whistle, for instance. Oh, yeah. Um, I've seen that piece. I've also, I, in, in person, I've seen the piece called Who Gives a Number Two? Correct. That is uh, also, the, I believe that was the one that you were talking about. So I took yes. that concept mm -hmm. of the abomination and I added to a current issue at the time, which was the bathroom ordinance. They were trying to pass laws. The HRO. Uh, yeah, the HRO. They were mm -hmm. trying to pass laws uh, to, I guess, prevent people from using a bathroom. And that's where I came up with the term who gives a number two because, you know, but then the number two also deals with choices. Right. And right. number two is a pencil. So you have all these choices and you're make, and then who checks all these choices? I, and you know what, to be honest with you, in a humorous way, I almost really want evil to succeed, but just in a humorous way, temporarily, mm -hmm. because in reality, when you think about it, yeah, if you really, 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 really give people what they want, they really would not want it. Yeah. They really, because think about it. They think really, they, they like, think okay, they want so it. you really going, you, have you really thought this thing through? Mm -hmm. Think about it. Like what? You're going to have somebody in a bathroom, like looking, how? You know? Right. How do you do this? Yeah. How do you accomplish this? People who are talking about a uh, ethno state and all that. How? Mm -hmm. Do you do this? I want to see it accomplished straight up, just yeah. temporarily. I want to see, I want to give you what you want. Mm -hmm. I'm entertained by the fact, like, okay, really? Can you imagine an ethno state? All white people closed off. First of all, it's not going to work because people got family, right. you know? So what, you're going to block yourself from your own family because they don't want to join in, right? Yeah. And then realistically, who's going to do the work? Who's going to build? Who's going to do the plumbing? Who's going to cut the grass? Who's going to cook the food? Who's going to do that? Huh? Who's going to do all that? Yeah. I want to see. <laughs> Lots of, seems and, and like then, you're very And you know thoughtful. what? Let me, yeah. let me tell you what the arrogance of it is. The arrogance is the person, like, let's say a Joe, the plumber. Mm -hmm. He thinks he's going to be senator. Mm -hmm. Right? So they go automatically already have a fight already because Joe, the plumber, they don't think he's going to be senator. No, you was out there plumbing. You are going to be in there plumbing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, so a lot of your art is, is um, and I know you in your mind as an artist there, and I can speak being an artist myself. I don't, I'm not, my, I don't, my medium is not mixed medium or mixed media. Mm -hmm. It's more of music and singing. Um, but as an artist, I know sometimes we, we, and I, I'm trying to, how can I phrase this? Sometimes we create our art and it's, it means something to us. Do you find that the interpretation of what other people see in your art, do they usually hit it right on the head or do you have to explain a little bit of what your art represents when they see it? I like, um, actually it happens in all ways. Um, I have an idea of exactly what I have in my head. Sometimes people get it automatically. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, sometimes they have their own interpretation. And it's not something that I thought of, but it fits. And sometimes there are, I, I like right now, I'm really not trying to add too much interpretation with the series uh, that I'm doing because it tells its own story. Mm -hmm. um, and <laughs> I sold one of those pieces recently. And basically all it is, is um, I'm using uh, wood and uh, some thin metal but to create an image like it's really wood and real metal, like it's really heavy and it has weight. Mm -hmm. So I sold it to uh, one of the pieces. I use it real rusty metal. Uh, so I sold it to someone and they couldn't wait to tell me uh, why they bought it. First of all, 
the title is sticking to, or sticks together. So she said she loved the title because it reminds her of the relationship they're in right now. Mm. Uh, <laughs> and they just moved together. And uh, she said, but the second thing is, it remind me of a rusty old woman sticking to a new piece of wood. Mm. I said, oh my God, can mm. I use that in my bio mm. <laughs> or, or my artist statement? Mm. <laughs> That's pretty interesting. You can't make that one up. No, no. Yeah. So everybody has a different um, feel about why they purchase your art. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. That's why I'm not really, uh, to be honest with you, I love uh, making money and everything, but that's not the primary purpose. Ultimately, I have these ideas and visions, so I don't really want to sell art. I want to sell ideas. Like I really like, let's say, okay, I went to Eco Relics recently to go get, uh, I was looking for a piece of metal. Um, and I saw one immediately, but when I looked at it, I was like, okay, do I really want to use this or not? Because it had an emblem or something on there. But once I started looking at it, I started, it looks like a logo that was part of a factory or something that's on a metal. So then I started thinking, would it be incredible? Cause I, I don't even know what year it was, what this, but this is, this has a piece of history. Wouldn't it be incredible for me to just grab that piece of metal? keep that emblem as it is, research the location, everything, recreate that whole scenery and actually find out a person or somebody who worked there or yeah. somebody who, if the business has been gone for years or whatever, just mail them that piece. Just the idea of the yeah. possibility of something like that happening makes me happy more so than, okay, look, it's going to sell for $10,000. Mm -hmm. Just the idea. So it's from the sounds of it and based on what, you, what you've said, correct me if I'm wrong, you create art to be a social experiment. Absolutely. Mm. That's exactly what, and I'm it's discovering this myself right now. It's like I'm going back to school. I'm mm -hmm. realizing things that I never thought before. Like okay. it is really a social experiment. I have these thoughts in my head. Uh, be, and one of the, the, the great thing about my social experiments is the goal is to get people together. Because I don't think that there is a, I really don't know. I'm sure there is somebody like myself that's connected to so many different types of people right. and speak so many different languages, not just languages like, uh, you know, Creole, English, mm -hmm. uh, French, Spanish, um, but language like culture. Like you could, I can say something from the street and you would know what it means. Mm -hmm. I could say, like, let's say if I say, okay, Amendment 2 burns in Florida, you don't want that smoke. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Right. Somebody that's like educated about the amendment would know what that is. Yeah, exactly. Somebody yeah. who is into weed politics and culture would know what that is. Somebody who's from the streets mm -hmm. would know what that is. Mm -hmm. All three of them are connected. Mm. So I have this uh this piece, right? And I have this vision for it, which is uh very interesting because everything that I do for some reason is always relevant no matter what time. So I have a feeling I'll be around forever. So that's wow. why I think yeah. like really in the future and not really like what's going on right now. Mm -hmm. So I have this vision. Uh, I actually wrote about this a while back, which I rarely do because I keep my thoughts very, very private. Usually I do it in a painting, but it was just happening so quickly. So I started writing about it. Um, but we just had an experience uh, recently with uh, what I consider the Black Klan. And, uh, which, uh, okay, uh, I, uh, keep me in check because I'm going to go all over the place. Oh, th this is your time. We're okay. here to, to get a little piece of what you want to share with us in your brain. Okay, so basically I have a painting. It's dealing with the 12 jewels. If anybody who is really, really into hip-hop uh, listen to, especially Wu-Tang, mm -hmm. you're familiar with Supreme Mathematics, 12 jewels. Knowledge, wisdom, understanding, freedom, justice, equality, food, clothing, shelter, love, peace, happiness. I don't know if I said it in the right order or whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, but anyways, the client or the person, a friend who bought this painting is a white male, maybe 50, between 56, 50, 60, <laughs> Republican, <laughs> voted for Trump, uh -huh. right? Mm -hmm. Why does he have a painting? Because he loves Overstreet Dukas artwork. I don't. Hey, it, it is what it is. Art is subjective too. Yeah. So, and and you know what? The reality of it is, that's the weird thing is, you would think out of all the 
paintings that I paint uh, and how it's socially black conscious and all that, that a black person would buy it. Nope. The antithesis nope. of what you thought. Absolutely not. Yeah. Most likely. My, uh, what you call my demographics or who you sell it to, is probably white males between the age of 50, 60. <laughs> and if you want to top it off, gay. Really? Absolutely. I can see that. Really? Now, now it separates from, okay, that, that yeah, those are my two demographics. It's it, uh, actually all basically white males between the age of 50, 60. Um, and then if you want to throw in that on an average, yeah, it's a gay white male. And then if it's not a gay white male, then it's a Republican <laughs> white male. <laughs> you know, it's a big difference. Wow. So what I'm saying, I got the receipts. What are you talking yeah. about, soldier yeah. boy? <laughs> so, <laughs> hey, <laughs> tell him. So, oh, we could get into that, too. <laughs> we could get into that, too, but we don't got time. Yeah, we, <laughs> okay, we don't, have, we don't even have time. So I got the receipt. You don't soldier even got boy, time. Tell him. Okay. So um, you know so, your clients. So anyways, so anyways, uh, so this piece is right there in his uh in his uh office. He he does business, real estate, whatever. Um, I have a vision that one of these days, what I call the Black Klan, is gonna have a rally similar to what just happened right now. The Indian dude, the mega hat uh, guy, and the uh, uh, Hebrew Israelite. Mm -hmm. And they're going to be talking and they're going to be talking. And he's going to get annoyed. <laughs> please, will you please stop the noise? Yeah. How the hell are you going to tell me to stop the noise? You don't know nothing about this. Gonna, you don't know about this knowledge, wisdom, this understanding. Yes, I do. How the hell you know uh, Overstreet? So <laughs> I can show you right now yeah. how you know. It's in my office. Everything you just talked about is there right now. Why is it in your office? Huh? How come a white have you studied? Have you looked at research? Why would you even have that in your office if you knew what it represented? Well, then why don't you find out? Yeah. Find out. So do you find... Because the mean, guy is fully aware of what he has. Yeah. So let me ask you a question about that. So since this person is not the person you think should purchase your art, mm -hmm. do you find that their eyes are becoming... Um, well, I, I won't say eyes. That their mindset is becoming a little bit more broadened? Are, are you able to have conversations with them about the art specifically? Are you able to um, elaborate on other social issues because of your art? Well, um, so far I've noticed a quite sw uh, shift. But it, 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 I'm not saying it's because of art or communication. I'm just, you know, I observe. That's what I do. So there has been a shift in his communications on how he talks about Trump. <laughs> but you know what? He, Trump could do that on his own. Yeah. So <laughs> I ain't taking no credit for that one. Mm. Okay. So um, in your bio, it talked about found objects. And I know you, you mentioned wood and you went, you mentioned metal. Mm -hmm. um, give me a little bit, uh, a little bit more paint, paint more of a picture about why you use found objects. What is your infatuation with found objects and why you use those in your art? Um, I don't know. There, there could be a lot of reasons. Um, one of the reasons is, I don't know, it's around. <laughs> yeah. It's just a simple. It's available. It's, it's available. Okay. Um, and I think that everything that, um, I'm involved, everything that's around me, you're going to see it in my artwork. You could look at my artwork and tell where I was, what period it was, what place I was, what job I was doing. Seriously, you could look at all that and tell, you could look at my work and tell all that. So, so when, you, when you go back and you look at some of the pieces that you created, mm -hmm. it, you kind of create a time capsule in a sense. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, speaking of, uh, well, let's go back to um, the found objects. Um, I just, you know what the thing is, I'm, I'm blessed, especially when it comes with objects. Uh, people are always just giving me stuff. To a point where I'm like, okay, it's becoming overwhelming. I was actually thinking about just quitting the whole mixed media thing. Really? <laughs> Hell, I mean, not right. Of course, so why? I was gonna, why? Because, look, if you walk into my studio and you walk into an artist's studio that just paints 
it's a completely different thing. Like, well, actually, I can't even make that uh, excuse because Zach uses fine objects and he is a neat freak. But, yeah, it's still a little different. So, I mean, if you're just painting, you know, you need a canvas. An artist uses roughly about maybe three brushes on a painting realistically. And a couple of little tubes of paint and you get to go. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm talking about cutting, wood, metal, gluing, sanding, yeah. moving one, one place to another, finding something, holding it, uh, yeah, people giving you stuff constantly. I, look, they don't even <laughs> knock. Like I just come in my studio <laughs> and it'd be a bag <laughs> full of stuff. Found objects. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. But it is miraculous when you see these things appear at the right time, at the right place, yeah. at the right painting. Or on so they the come right to painting. you. They, yeah, just, they, they just are around you. They come to you. Right. They come to you by way of your friends. Absolutely. What's your, when, when did you first start? Like when you, when did you first know in your soul? This is what I'm supposed to do. You talked about the job earlier. Mm -hmm. You talked about, you know, working at the plant and working in, in, in uh, home construction at mm -hmm. one, period, one period of time. When did you know? Uh, I don't know why that's hard to answer because I feel like I really always knew. It's just I, really when did I accept it? Mm -hmm. And pretty much I think every day is an acceptance. You can't believe that this is a, look. I can't believe that this is what I do. I can't believe that this is what I do for a living. I can't believe that I really, really enjoy this. Yeah. I don't think that nobody enjoys this more than me. <laughs> Seriously. Wow. Yeah. So as much as people talk about, oh, wow, I love your stuff. I love it. I'm serious. You got to stand behind me. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's how you should feel as an artist, mm -hmm. period. You got to be your best critic and you got to be your best, uh, cheerleader absolutely yeah yeah so you you came per, you you brought a few things into the studio and oh I, I yeah would be remiss. i forgot all about that man. i would be remiss if i didn't if i didn't bring those up and, and when over, normally people come in and they either come in with their instruments mm. um they come in with you know a few cds and stuff Overstreet came in with a couple present like lip, gift wrap bags and <laughs> um there's some yeah, what what's going on? It appears on to be here? a well, gift wrap bag. I just in case I brought some things just in case yeah, I want to talk about art. Yeah, please. You know, and you know, and what I do, and you know. Okay. But, so so because of uh, we keeping it real, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Oh, yeah, I made it uh, a conscious decision not to listen to your show. Okay. Right. right. And yeah. you know why? Because that's what we do. <laughs> you make a conscious decision not no, to no, listen to the I show. I do not try to fake friend anybody. Yeah. Like, you know, because it is a, it is want, a you, real issue, right? Absolutely. Think about it. Like, everybody that we know are doing something. Yeah. Like, even the last one uh, that um, I was with Patrick, I still haven't listened to it. That wow. was a good one. Yeah. That was yeah. a really good that one. That was real good. Yeah, I know. But but it, artists are like that. Like, I don't like to listen to my voice. I don't like to see images of me. Patrick is like that, too. Really? Yeah. Um, it's a weird thing that God plays. Yeah. Like, the things that everybody wants, he gives it to the person that could really, really use it, but is scared of it. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like some weird, <laughs> twisted God game, you know? <laughs> Like, I feel like I'm giving everything in life for success. Yeah. Charisma, good looks, the name. You will never come up with a name like Overstreet Ducasse. You That's, can't that make is that so true. up. That is so but true. But I'm telling you, if you could see the person that I am inside, you know, it's like, it's the complete opposite. So it's it you doesn't fit the name at all. No. So what's your, what's your like, name on the inside? It. What's your name? Somebody that you would never heard of. You know what I'm saying? Like, somebody, <laughs> whatever that name is. Like, yeah. I feel like I'm inside of a body that I probably shouldn't be in. Or like, God, Jesus, why didn't you leave this job for somebody else? Because he knew you were capable. Yeah. He knew it. Mm. So, yeah, I'm yeah. serious. Like, I'm like, it's so much that we got to do. I'm like, why? Like, I don't know. I guess that's what I got to do. All right, so... Go ahead and pull out the first thing. 
Okay, so first of all, this is a bag, as you can see. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Like Andrew Dice said, okay. what you got in the bag? What you got in the bag? So right now, Overstreet, and I'm going to describe it Actually, you, you know what? To a... be honest with you, uh, y'all make a decision, um, and this is for all three of y'all. Oh! So, oh, wait, who get what? to take it home? Oh, no, no. Uh, all y'all getting a gift, but nobody knows which is which, though. Oh, so let's see. oh, this is go. this is kind of fun. Okay, yeah. All right, Adam, you do. The and then honor. once uh, you open first. it up, I'll talk Make about it. Okay. <laughs> he has the camera, but you go first. Okay, all right. So wait, wait. How do we do this? Do I dig in and then pull out? You could do whatever you want. Okay, but right. once you select it, you select it. So that is your piece. <laughs> yeah, just okay. touch and grab. Do I grab it. Stop make it so. Okay. Just grab the thing. Grab it. Yes. Hey, I need to take the bag too. You just. <laughs> <laughs> and can I trade with anybody? That's what. Like, oh, actually, it. you know, I don't mind if you trade. A gift is a gift. <laughs> the Lord loves a cheerful giver. Wait, let me turn the camera on you. <laughs> All right, here we go. Damien is now. Wait, hold on. Let me get yours. Damien is now. Oh, that's dope. Mm. Okay, his blues. Damien. Okay, oh. so the piece that I'm holding up right now, what is this called? Rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> oh, so, that is dope. All right. See how the yeah, it, it, it can be so powerful but so humorous? Yes, sir. And silly and still strong. Oh, I was going to ask you about that. About the uh, oh, I was gonna wow. Ask you. So, okay, so I'm gonna what for those of you who are listening to this broadcast, um, the three pieces with over Overstreet's permission, would I be able to take oh, small you could pictures? Do okay, I yeah, could take I pictures. I'm gonna post these on Instagram, great, they'll also be on the website. Great. Um, and see, they say I don't know how to promote, man. I tell you, I, I have like, <laughs> like right now, my, my skin, like I, my hair is standing up on my head for real, like I feel. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. So the, the piece that Autumn has, yeah, that there is a, this is, uh, looks like the face of Obama. It is. And there's lots of symbolism. I see lots of. I can't of... tell you um, the uh, the title of this one because of censorship reasons. Mm -hmm. um, but it deals with, uh, I did this years ago. Wow. I've seen such that. A yeah, long time. I've seen that. And the reason yeah. why you probably haven't seen it is because a chip owns it, the original. You like you train, change it out because you did the Florida. Florida. Yeah, well, this one was, I didn't add the Florida targets yeah. on the back, which I actually planned on. I was going to ask you about that when, yeah. I, when Damien got done. So Chip Southworth, owned, he the owns the original. Yeah. And this piece, is this original as well? No, all these are prints. But these are prints. Me, they are very valuable prints. Because I know, <laughs> like, it, you can see the, the, the piece that I have, there's, uh, you can tell that there is definitely wood and you can see dimension here. Correct. Um, there is the infamous Afro pick with the fist up. I mean, I, there's so much going on, so. Correct. So the one that Autumn has, uh, the one with Obama, like I say, I can't tell the, uh, I can't tell you what the title is, but it was around the time during the rise of the Tea Party. And I was doing almost like a mock yeah. of uh, Barack Obama yeah, was serving yeah. them tea. Have you ever heard the term, the pot uh, calling the, the kettle, kettle black? black? Yes. So basically it was my way of saying the pot calling the kettle something else that they want to call it. But don't. Wow, right? that's dope. Yeah. So it was dealing with the hypocrisy of all these things, of these symbols that you have on him, right? And one of the most, uh, uh, oh, you can't, even up till today, I was trying to expose this like way back in the tea party. Yeah. Even up to the day, you can look at on his right hand side, what do you see? You see the sign of Russia. Yeah. I wish and, I could And, and the handshake that. and. Yeah, all that. Yeah. So yeah. And they were saying that he was the communist. I remember. You remember? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And who's dealing with Russia now? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Number 45. And, and, and when was this painting done? Okay, as like a matter of fact, 08, as a matter of fact, huh? You did this in 08, 09? Possibly. Yeah. I'm know. talking about the original one. Uh, 08, 09, Because possibly. I have... No, is that sign 08, 09? That's probably the print sign. Yeah, yeah. No, Oh. Because I have pictures of a of an event that I, I took of that was in two thousand ten, um, when you did this particular. Uh, oops. 
See, we did this. Um, we did this in 2010 or 11. Okay. We did this glory out of Target. So breast cancer awareness. Yeah, yeah, that was a while back. Yeah. We did this, and then. Mm -hmm. Yep. This was at the uh, student loft, right? Mm, no, uh, this was um the thing for um. For Lubins. Oh, okay, the Haitian charity thing. Yeah, Locked the Haitian them. charity okay. thing. Yeah. Yeah, I saw Lubin's what. So Blue, I'm I'm, I'm curious about what you have. Well, I was gonna tell you, you don't remember this. Oh, oh, you talk. Oh, remember he was talking about sticks together. Yes. So that's it. That's a print. That is a example. But so far, I've done probably, hmm, probably about different series. Eight uh, on that series. Uh, they're currently uh, well, the ones that are not sold are currently at Bold Bean. The one on Stockton Street. Okay. The um, original bowl bean. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I didn't know that. Um. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, for those of you who are listening abroad, bowl bean is a coffee shop. Wow. So, yeah, I'm having a little opening there this Friday the 8th, 7 to 8 p.m., where you'll be able to see very, very small pieces, where very, at? very large pieces, bold bean. Bowl bean on, on Stockton. 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 Street. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I gotta check so that. So that's a uh, Friday. Mm-hmm. You still um, got that one? Yes, I still. Oh, actually, huh? Oh no, I sold, they, I, that. No, no, I sold that. I sold that. This the one No, no, I sold that one. This is the one that I was referring to when I Yo, said I saw before used to be I met you. Yes. 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 Guess who got that one? Who? Steven? No, the Trump supporter. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. Yeah. Hey, 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 I hate. Hey, I hate. No, I, I actually, I, I, I love it. Yeah, I yeah. love it because it's such a dichotomy. Mm -hmm. It's a dichotomy when you think you can't, you can't never pick your client. Mm -hmm. No. And wow. it, it just it well, baffles my mind to this every day. Every painting day. I have tells a story, so yeah. I would love to see, you know, somebody or him explaining that story to somebody. Wow. So <laughs> I'm first of all, I just want to thank I mean, oh, thank you thank so, you much, so much, for, much for for this. This is um I'm so moved yes. and uh, even by a print. And I'm sure this piece was Wait, 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 wait. Let's 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 let's, 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 let's be clear okay. uh, since we're dealing with professionalism. Yes. Which most artists don't. Yeah, by have, all means. But, uh, when you say uh no, this was professionally shot by one of Jacksonville finest. <laughs> yeah, Doug Ang, oh, and yeah. printed oh, yes. Doug Ang. by Doug Ang. So no, it ain't no regular shot. <laughs> Man, <laughs> thank you so print. much. This <laughs> no. is beautiful. It's amazing. Mm. I have to go out and find the the right frame for this. That's right. Um, it's easy. It's a square. <laughs> so, well, yeah. <laughs> my piece. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Mm. Okay, so so talk about what's next. You you um, you have the show coming see, up I on Friday show from up. seven to eight um, at Bull Bean. Right. Um, on on the eleventh, I have a talk um, at uh, five thirty to seven. Uh, those talk will start at six uh, and at seven. Um, but it's at uh, Saint Mark's Episcopal Church, four one two nine Oxford Avenue, three two two one zero. Um, but yeah, so I'll be just talking. I'll have some pieces. I'll be talking, I'm having a presentation, talk about art. Yeah. Um, I, I'm probably going to focus on uh, censorship. Um, okay. Because I have a lot of, uh, so for some reason or another, I feel trapped because I got so much uh, things to say. Mm -hmm. And uh, to be honest with you, I really, really, really enjoy, I'm probably the only person that can say this or that will say this. On the one hand, I feel trapped, right? Yeah. But then on the other hand, I really enjoy the entrapment because it forces me to be creative, mm. right? Mm -hmm. So every foul thing that I could possibly say, I have to think of a smart way to express it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a, it's a good challenge for you. It's a great challenge. It's yeah. very entertaining. Yeah, I can see some, some see, symbolism. Wait yeah. till you see my, uh, my, my, my Bokeem Woodbine um, uh, <laughs> like, hey, oh, oh, okay, wait. Okay, we, oh, you see you laughing? What what comes in? Let's test this. What comes in mind when, when that, just by that name? Um, triumph okay. in the acting world. Okay. Um, his state of mind now. Okay. He's very aware. Um, and Tupac. 
Mm. Okay. You know, he did um Bokeem, he was he did the uh, movie with Tupac and um yeah, he did the movie with Tupac and he did a interview on Breakfast Club where he talked about his relationship with Tupac. Okay. Trust me, don't pay me no mind. This Go ahead. is strictly entertainment. Uh, <laughs> and he has so, the gap. <laughs> okay, you know what comes okay, what comes to mind when Bokeem Woodbine? With Bokeem Woodbine. Uh, for pardon you my ignorance, I don't even know who that is. You right. do know. It's the guy that looked like Tretch from uh, Naughty by Nature. How old are you? I just turned 43. He played really? the Really? We're the same age and you don't know who Bokeem would buy? No. He's a guy in, uh, in, in our era of movies like, uh, what's his, uh, what was Poetic his? Justice. Um, no, the main one that I remember was uh, the one with Chris Tucker, uh, Dead President. Yeah, Dead President. Yeah, but he, uh, I remember having conversations with our friends and we always used to joke, we're going to go see a movie with Bokeem Woodbine. He oh, gonna be yes. the first. Okay. He's yes. going to be the first one to die in a movie. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's always like dying and he always have this yeah. weird, exaggerated way of dying. Like how many ways can you die? <laughs> so anyways, but what does that have to do with censorship? Bo King would buy. Mm -hmm. Okay. What does that have to do? Well, it has to do with Christmas addicts also. Historic. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Oh, okay. Like See, that. okay. You're getting <laughs> it, like right? Yeah, right? I get it. Okay. Yeah. So what does Bo King would buy? Christmas addicts got to do with each other. The first to die, Christmas Addicts. What war was it? I uh, forgot. World, uh, world War War. Was it one World War Two? I don't even remember at this point. I'm trying to make a point. <laughs> okay, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm point, with you. The point he, is, he was is the first, that to, he's die the first war. to die, and I just have this vision of Bokeem Woodbine playing that role. Mm -hmm. But the role is not something a role that I really want to play. I just w love the the uh the uh the uh a specific uh uh what do you call it in the half baked movie uh Dave Chappelle said something like I don't want to be the first to die by a crossbow. Right? Yeah. So since I can't say Boston Massacre. He was the first one to die in the Boston okay. Massacre. So since I can't say the N word to die. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. See? See? <laughs> yeah. Okay, you see he, where he I'm heading? I, 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 I don't want to be the first <laughs> Edward bleep, to, die. to die. I just thought that was funny. So, how yeah. do I express that yeah. to you if I you know, if I wanted to say it? Yeah. I figure out a way. Put Bo King with by with a crossbow. And let, let him do playing it. a role of Christmas addicts. There you go. <laughs> The first Edward to die. Where is this going to be? I got to be there. No. I got to see this. But seriously, this is the stupid things. Right. Like, look, if it, and that's why I brought my, uh, my, uh. Yeah, just in case. My stuff. It's <laughs> just in case. Look, I come up with these, I come up with at least 20 of these a day. Wow. Easily. Wow. Interrupting my wife at work and stuff. Like, you cannot believe. You call I her and give her ideas. Like, guess no, what she's right there. She got a studio right there. Oh, wow. Why you think I'm married? Oh. <laughs> duh, duh. I'm lazy. <laughs> oh, so that's awesome! Wow, that's awesome! All right, so so this is good. So you got two dates coming. Okay, up. so yeah, I got the two dates. I got the gallery talk, and then you know, shoot, everything else is Black History. It's a lot. It's my wife and her son's birthday the next day after the show, and. Yeah, it's a lot. So, in the spirit of now, mm -hmm. yeah, I know you mentioned that you are a you a, a person that always is looking at the future, mm -hmm. looking ahead. Mm -hmm. But why do you live now? What is what is going on about now? I don't know. I'm just getting examples uh, of everything that I'm doing is happening right in front of me. I'm listening to like when. Um, Actually, the great thing about what's different now is first, I had the ability to have people around me that, you know, like Jesus Christ had his witnesses that mm -hmm. has witnessed all this. Yeah. But mm. now I've taken upon myself not to have my witnesses, but to start writing it down and videotaping it. So you cannot believe how many moments that you're going to hear me say you cannot believe this happened and how wow. it happened. Yeah. The song I'm listening to, the art piece I'm working on, the connection with my even like. Let me give you a perfect example, mm. right? Mm -hmm. This whole, I'm a huge, like, Steely Dan fan, right? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm working on one piece, and it's called The Lie. Oh, man, I don't even want to tell you the secret 
Don't oh. tell us. Don't tell us. We, we, See, we can I'm, wait. I'm unlike a lot of artists. Like, they yeah. love, like, they just, I like you not knowing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. There's some, the, the art of presentation and surprise. Correct. So, so basically, for me, loving that song, it ended up with me uh, creating a, uh, a work of art that I'm working on right now uh, of Colin Kaepernick. Mm. The idea is, I mean, so brilliant. Mm-hmm. And so brilliant that I can't think that nobody ever pick it up. You know, it was for so, you. It was meant for you. Uh, that's what I say all the time. Like I'm like, <laughs> no, I'm serious. I really feel like I'm so blessed with these ideas. Like I'm like, God, thank you. Yeah. Like really, seriously. I I wrote this one down. I was like, please find me a God to worship. There is no way that mm-hmm. I'm coming up with this all by myself. Seriously. And I am not a, you know, a, a, a believer and, you know, like super, I'm not really into, into yeah. religion like that. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, that's how I feel when these ideas come like, oh my God, like nobody. I feel so honored that you have chosen me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> Though I, I'm going to have to tell you, and you know what, to be honest with you, not because I'm scared somebody's going to steal the idea or anything like that. Mm-hmm. It's just that, uh, I want people to figure it out for themselves, for themselves and the relationship. And what I'm doing is putting a communication between people. I've been testing this out recently of what people know and what they don't know and who knows it and who doesn't know it. You'll be surprised how much people know and how much they don't. Mm -hmm. The questions I would ask jokingly and they just don't know. And then the person that you would think, no, don't, uh, you don't know does know mm-hmm. so it's a, an experiment to me whereas you would see a title like the logic behind the pretzel what's yeah. the logic behind the pretzel <laughs> that's brilliant. That's brilliant. right that's the title yeah. of the piece and yeah. it's dealing with Kaepernick right wow and I guarantee you there is somebody out there y'all better phone a friend seriously a co-worker a Haitian person, I, it's gonna be stuff and creep. Like I want y'all to not know. Like, look, just ask somebody. <laughs> you yeah, know. Yeah. So I guarantee you that somebody automatically, because the way that the, that the brain works, mm-hmm. you could say the logic uh, behind the pretzel to somebody, and they automatically know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Now, how do they connect it to Cap- Kaepernick? Is a different story. But it all makes. But it sense. all makes sense. It yeah. all makes sense. Yeah. So, okay. yeah, I am designing a new shoes for Colin Kaepernick. Yeah. I took you it upon it myself. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Right. You know what the shoes is going to be called? Don't tell us. Oh! Don't tell us. Oh, okay. No. You have to come oh, back when, oh, they're, when okay, it's produced. Okay, you okay. have to come back mm. and, and talk about the process. Right. That's what I'm interested and, and, in. And, but yeah. you know what? Just, this is, what, this is the, the interesting thing about it. There is absolutely no limit. When I say I'm making a shoes, like I really, like the only limit is me. How far do I want to take this? Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. It's all about how far I want to take this. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing stopping it. Because you can. And you know what? And I thought about it. Like, because it all started with a painting, right? Mm Mm-hmm. So I started thinking, I started, okay, what if I really, really wanted to get this done? I could really, really do this. Even if it was exclusive. Even if it was just one pair, even yeah. if it was 10 pairs, I can totally do this. Yeah. How, how, how can I do this? How can I do this? Dude, guess whose father is a shoemaker? Who? My father. <laughs> <laughs> right. You think that so, sounds so bizarre? You think that sounds so bizarre? I guarantee you that there is somebody right now in that same mind state thinking, right, where something is right there in front of them. And they can't put the two together. Oh, how me and my father don't get to along and we don't talk, we don't bond that much. How are we going to? And the same thing with the Dave Chappelle thing, as you mm-hmm. were saying with the marijuana thing. Uh, the one, uh, the father's toting, the kid is toting, and they're both trying to figure out how to bond with each other. <laughs> so it's like, okay, I yeah. need the shoes. Okay, be a father, I love him, but we don't bond that much. Mm-hmm. So this is a perfect opportunity. This is just an idea. Like, I'm yeah. constantly thinking moving in the now that's excellent yeah well take one last moment and tell all of our listeners um because you 
to to know this guy is is to appreciate him and i, I feel mm. that everybody listening is doing themselves a disservice if they have not seen your work up close and personal take a moment and tell everyone where they can find you outside of those two other events that you got coming up are you on the internet do you do social media what do they want to know where to find me yeah. right now mm-hmm. right here <laughs> no, obviously. or you can find yes. me you can find me at cork um i'm always there cork art district uh, cork in art Jacksonville. district 2689 roselle street uh 32204 um do not come knocking even though i say i'm there all the time because you will not get in That's uh it. and the reason why you will not get in and look I, you think that i would have to explain this to people but <laughs> No, the reason why you can't get in because it's studios for artists to work. The only cool. time that you could get in really is if there's a show. So unless you want me to come up at your job <laughs> and just come looking for you, you know, yeah. you got to make an appointment, <laughs> yeah, call absolutely, somebody. Absolutely. And you know what? It's going to be tough. I'm just telling you because everybody in there are real artists. Yeah. Even the person who's in charge. You ain't going to catch it that easy because she got things to do, <laughs> like creating art. Yeah. Um, and don't be surprised. Um, our security, too, is tough. If you do knock on a door and somebody opens and it's uh, a princess with a sword, a mask, and a shield, do not be surprised if they open the door. <laughs> so you're laughing, right? That's our princess security. Mm-hmm. So you know yeah, what I'm yeah, talking yeah, about, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're online. Uh, OverstreetDukas.com. That simple. Simple. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm on Facebook. I'm on Twitter. I'm on uh, Insta. I'm on all that stuff. I don't check them. Nothing. Yeah. Um, I do the Facebook on a probably just to promote or on a general uh, if I really really want to say something. But uh, yeah, I'm like like you said, I'm around. I'm always here. Like, it's, it's not that hard to find. That's really why I waited to tell you that, because I was thinking, okay, well, I'm going to do the research. I'm like, look, you're here right there, right, here, yeah. right there. Yeah, yeah. So, Well, thank you again for your time, and well, thank, thank you, you for these thank presents. You. Um, yeah. Man, you, you have blown me away. Yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm almost speechless. Blue, All right. you know what to do. Can you, can you take us out? Yes, yes. Uh, um, before I take us out, um, I also want to thank Overstreet for helping me do my first art show at um, For Our Eyes Only. Um, he, uh, this was back in, I think, 2011, 2012. I was so nervous, and he, I mean, he didn't ask me for no money. He didn't, he, I think I offered to give him some money. I, I don't, you know, I forgot how much it was, but he gave me a whole bunch of frames for my photos. Wow. Yeah, like. Uh, he saved me because I was nervous. I was like, "What should I do? What should I?" He just said, "Man, just just be you. Do you like that was it? Like he didn't give me a bunch of words. He didn't give me no pep talk. He said, "Man, just just you know, this is what I'm gonna do." So yeah. he showed me the things that he was doing and putting together, and I was blown away because it was the week of, yeah. and I'm looking at all the stuff that he had. I was like, "Oh man, I don't got nothing incredible." But then, but anyway, by the time it came, he lent me a whole bunch of frames that he had. And I put my pictures up, and then it was a great four hours only. 2012 was a great lineup. Was, was this me. at the Ritz Theater? Yeah, the Ritz Theater. Mm-hmm. Um, I was very excited, but uh, he, yeah, he saved hey, me. <laughs> can I say this jokingly? Go ahead, go. You can't. <laughs> Look, this is how you should feel as an artist, for real. If you're in a show with somebody, think about it. Like, That's how does it feel like if you're in a show with somebody, right, and mm-hmm. nobody really is afraid to be in a show with you? It's like, okay, I'm, I'm doing a show with so-and-so. Oh, I got this. Man, you feel me? It was some phenomenal people. Oh man, yeah, wow. yes, indeed. Uh, yeah. We roll with phenomenal. Every, you know what? We are a part of the finest for real. What happened we to really the depressionist? Are, for real. Oh, man. Do Dre? I have to, do yeah. I have to pull out? My oh, okay, okay. We got it. You want me to pull out? <laughs> do it. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> <Yeah>. Okay. <laughs> All right. I got a response for you. So the depressionist, because we mentioned that in your bio. Tell us who the depressionists are. No, he asked me what, what happened? happened to the depressionist. What happened? Okay. Look, when was the last time you seen anything depressionist, oh, right? Man, when I was in the old the little elementary school. Mm-hmm. Um, back when before they made an apartments and y'all was in there, you and Dre. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Y'all did a show at Boomtown. I mean, this was like maybe two thousand eight, two thousand nine. 
All right. 2010 is, I think, the last time I seen something. Okay, well, we're talking about probably, like, yesterday or two days ago. Depressionist T-shirts is in Tallahassee, Florida. Oh, you know wow. what I'm saying? Um, they're definitely here in Jacksonville. Uh, there's a Depressionist documentary, cards, buttons, oh, jackets, gosh, lasers, handbags, all these things. Um, but, like, when I do something, really, sometimes I do something because I can. I know it's significant. I see the importance of it. And I do put a lot of effort and finance into it. But it's not like, you know, it's one of those things that, like I said, I'm here for like the 20, 30 year and for life type thing. You can't tell me a better. And we've been depressed for how long? A oh, while. Wow. Me, Adrian, and. Um, over a decade. And uh, me, Dre, so Over and Street Ducat. Yeah. Adrian Rhodes yeah. and Roosevelt Watson, Watson the third. The third. <laughs> so really, at the time we created this and where we are right now, you can't uh, <laughs> tell Soldier Boy. <laughs> Why? <laughs> hey, he should have came and hollered at me talking about he <laughs> trying to kill himself and he depressed and all that. Like he should have came and hollered at me, man. He should, man. We've been, we've been the depressedness, man. We could have helped them out. You know. <laughs> Hey, tell him, don't, don't come on Overstreet, don't come on Rhodes, and we better not catch him on Roosevelt either. <laughs> wow. Oh yeah, Roosevelt don't play. <laughs> Yo, Man. there you have it. There you have it. So again, thank you so much for your time. Blue, if you could take us out yes. so we could say goodbye, we're going to have to, we, we have to have oh, you yeah, back. Oh yeah, we got we to gotta have, have oh, you back. Yeah, anytime. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I want to do. Wanna, yeah, I should debut the, um, but it's, I'm working fast. I mean like yeah. fast, fast. So by okay. the time uh, this weekend comes, most likely, hopefully, well, I, I have to juggle between which one I want to focus on mm -hmm. for, uh, most. Uh, most likely it's going to be my wife, though. Yeah, yeah. It's her birthday. Okay. Uh, but, so she's uh, an Aquarius, too. Nice. Yeah. Hopefully I can get that at least close to done with that Kaepernick. Yeah. All right. Because I'm excited about well, that. Well, I'll, I'll be there to see you oh, on Friday. Oh, oh, oh. And even a better one than the Kaepernick. I got one. See, this is the beauty. I'm so excited because I get to communicate with so many different people and yes. so many different levels where I don't see that it's happening. So you get to be educated, Please. but not yeah. arrogantly educated educated where in a sense that both party or all parties have knowledge you yeah. bring it all together mm -hmm. so my the one after Kaepernick I'm doing one on a uh, Russian bird Russian bird uh, if I'm saying his name uh, correctly twisted tongue and uh, de Kunin two oh, very, Rosenberg very, Rosenberg no and, not Rosenberg, no? Russian I can't even Rush Limbaugh no I did one on Rush Limbaugh way back I, I it was a uh, how low can you go Rush Limbo. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. Wow. See, that's what, like, man, come on, man. I'm talking about years. So, what are we talking about? Oh, yeah, the uh, the, the, the Kunin. Yeah. Look up Erasing the Kunin. Okay. And then that will give you at least a heads up knowledge on the painting that is about to come. Okay. And it is a retaliation on that guy, Roseanne Barr. Uh, what's the uh, Megan Kelly, uh, Jimmy the Greek? Let's go back to the uh the, the original, and I don't even remember the guy's name, but that guy who said Martin Luther Kuhn. Wow, uh, oh, I can't think of so yeah. Name. So I yeah. have a I have merged the con uh, the the idea that idea with a historical event that happened between two artists at a certain time. Okay, mm. how did I come up with that? How can I not? <laughs> Only Overstreet Ducasse knows. <laughs> yeah. Overstreet yeah. Ducasse. Thank you. Yeah. If you like what you heard today, please follow us on social media on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Taste Test Radio. We also have a website, www.tastetest.live, where you can find all of our old episodes and hear past guest interviews. Taste Test Live is a fully syndicated podcast and is on podcast services such as Apple, Google, Stitcher, TuneIn, Spotify, CastBox, or wherever you listen to your podcast. Yeah. And I always say week after week, if you're listening online and you're listening on your podcast channel, write a review. We appreciate that. We love five stars. That is our show this week. Thank you so much, Overstreet Ducasse, for sharing so much of your time and bringing gifts. Mm. 
to the three of us today. So we, I, I'm, I'm blown away. I Thank am blown you. away. I'm honored, and it, I feel like it's an honor and a privilege to sit in your presence. And you have to come to my t- my house and let me cook for you. Oh well, to thank no, you I usually do the cooking. Okay, yeah, yeah. I cook absolutely. too. Absolutely. Okay, so we, we can we have could, a, we can have cook. a. Well, can, you want a battle? Communal. We can you can like a, a you know a cook off. All right, yeah, we'll do a cook off. Yeah. Um, I um, Maul challenged me to one, but he ain't responded yet. Um, he, he, he tasted will. he tasted my salmon, and he, I think he forfeited. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's it for us, guys. Thank you so much for listening to Taste Test Live. Please share this broadcast with your friends um, so that we can get the word out about these, uh, this artist and other artists that are on our podcast. This p- episode is sponsored by our friends at WJCT. WJCT is the leader in public broadcasting in Northeast Florida and is also the NPR affiliate where my radio show Taste Test appears. Um, so support WJCT public broadcasting. You can learn more at WJCT.org. That'll do it for us. Have a good day.